I'm here with the superintendent of Heritage Club, Jim Huntoon. Um, and Jim, let's go ahead and knock this out. Every great superintendent has a really cool dog, and you got a super cool dog here in George. How long has George been with you? Five years. He just turned five, and um, he's actually my second Labrador, and uh, he loves it out here. You're right. It's uh, it's one of the perks of the job. Yeah. And he's also, I like to tell people, you know, he's my therapy dog. When things go bad, he's there for me. Mm. You know, and sometimes when we, when we do what we do, you need that. Yeah. So let's get into what you do. Um, on a daily basis, what time does this golf course need to be prepped and ready for play? Anywhere between 724 and 804, depending on the time of year. So uh, this time of year with the darkness, uh, 804 is first tee time. We arrive about 630. Okay, and then you got folks out mowing and raking and doing all sorts of stuff even before the sun gets up. I, I see and looking around here in your shop, yep. I'm seeing a lot of headlights on yep. this equipment. Yep. Uh, you guys put those to good use, I'm betting. We do, the LED lights, which has been a huge improvement in our industry. You know, with the uh, new style lights, it lights things up a lot better. But, yeah, that's definitely part of it. Yeah, and going back to needing some therapy from, <laughs> from George, um, I, I, over the years, I've got to be buddies with a lot of superintendents, and, and I don't think people understand you, you, you guys have a really tough job because on a daily basis when everything is smooth and perfect, you, you don't exist. When you do exist is when you get some sort of issue, uh, <laughs> and, 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 that, and that makes your occupation really challenging. It does, but it's very rewarding, too. You know, it goes both ways. You know, um, you know we work hard, and you know, try to go through the process and give it its due diligence. And if you do that, usually things will work out. How, how many folks uh, on your staff here? We've got about 16. Yeah. Now, um, about seven of those are part-timers. Yeah. So, you know, with what we do here in Myrtle Beach, you know, with the double tee-in, you know, it's a little bit different than your traditional golf course. We have to get one and 10 ready to go at 804. So we need some extra manpower. Um, so a lot of guys, you know, like today, we'll have four or five guys that will leave at 930. They'll kind of do the morning job, mm -hmm. mowing, come in, and then they're gone for the day. Yeah, because it's hard to mow grass when people out there play. It right? is. That's the thing. we got to try to get as much done as we possibly can ahead of the golfers. That's our, that's our goal, and that's why we staff up like that. And I, I always thought weather is the toughest challenge because <laughs> gol golfers are wanting, if they got an 8 o'clock tee time, they're wanting to play at 8 o'clock, right. and they might not understand a couple hours ago it was raining. So you, you guys, rain or shine, I have to get this golf course prep. Yeah, it's, um, you know, this is just high-tech farming, Charlie, really, <laughs> you know, and we just have to – deal with the punches we're thrown, and um, you get over that. You learn to accept that early on if you're going to be successful at this, and um, you just take what comes and adjust. Yeah. One of the things that frustrates me uh, when, when I go play golf is, is I'll say, because everybody loves smooth greens. Yep. But not everybody wants to do what their responsibility is, which is repair ball marks. <laughs> right. You know, if you're lucky enough to make a ball mark, you got to repair it. That's got to be one of your pet peeves. Yeah, my biggest thing is um, raking traps, yeah. and it's um, it's not so much uh, whether you do it or don't do it. It's you know a lot of times you'll see golfers um, they don't give it much effort and they just kind of go in there like this, and yeah. you know if you spend an extra five seconds to smooth it out right, you've played on tour, you know how a bunker is supposed to be raked after you're done. That's really my biggest pet peeve, you know, not filling the divots and the ball marks doesn't bother me as much as that. Yeah. Um, the bad thing about it, too, is somebody doesn't do a good rake job and the next person gets it in there, the person who was supposed to rake it doesn't get blamed. You do. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes uh, you're better off just leaving it the way it is than, than raking it poorly, I guess, is my take on that. You know, you mentioned filling divots. Yep. Uh, every, every place you play golf now pretty much has the sand, the, the, yep. the, um, uh, the little containers with mm -hmm. the sand in it. Um, you, you, you mentioned that that's not a big deal for you, but I, I see people all the time, you know, after three holes, they don't have any sand left in that container because right. right. every time they make a divot, I mean, they have filled that sucker up. Right. That, that can't be good for the golf course. I mean, it, it's um, if they know how to do it, if you get the right amount of sand in the divot, it's perfect. If you, you know, lump it up where it's a little bit high, you know, the mowers, the fairway mowers, the reels, that sand gets in them and it'll dull out the reels and yeah. that creates more work for uh, for our mechanic and everything and it affects the quality of cut. But, uh, you know, there are a lot of golfers that love to fill their divot and three or four more. I would say of all the things in golf etiquette, from my experience of 20 years doing this, is 
golfers are best at filling divots. Yeah. I would say raking bunkers and filling ball marks would probably be second and third. What, when you say uh, the perfect sand yep. filled divot, what, what is that to you? What does that look like? It looks like, um, depending on the depth of a di the divot, you want to be about a quarter inch below the turf line. Yeah. You know, so that that way when the mowers go through it, they're not going to get it. That's enough sand to let the Bermuda grass creep over and you know, that's the quickest healing as well. Yeah, and a lot of people think that uh, there's some sort of magic mix in there. Uh, typically, what do you have in your sand fill? Straight sand here in Myrtle Beach. That's yeah. what most everybody uses. You know, the Bermuda grass will um, fill in. Now, after we're overseeded, we'll add seed in there. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, that's all we do here. Some people will use the green sand. Um, some just use yellow or white. You know, we use whatever we have stockpiled at the time. Um, up north, different places, you know, there's other things they'll add in there, peat mm -hmm. or other organic type amendments that will help the seed or the grass creep over or the seed to germinate. So it's, it's varied, really. What about replacing divots? Um, I, a lot of times I see people trying to put right. pieces of a little divot back and I look at them, that ain't going to work. No. What, what's, the, what's the thought process on replacing divots? On Bermuda grass, you really don't replace. I mean, yeah. obviously, as you know, on, on tour, what people see on TV, you know, the caddies always throw the divot back and replace it. But I think that's more of a courtesy to the other golfers to not have their ball, you know, go directly into an old divot. You can talk about that more than me. But uh, around here, no. What happens is if you put it back the next day or two, we're going to come out and mow the fairways. And then most everybody in Myrtle Beach will send some kind of blower. Yeah. Out behind the fairways to blow the clippings. Well, those divots just get blown off with all the clippings. Yeah, so it's what you're wasting your time if right. you're trying basically to replace right. replace divots. Well, Jim, I appreciate your time. Absolutely. I, I know you guys get up early to make uh, our golf experience as good as it can be. And uh, for myself and all the other golfers out there, we appreciate what you guys do every day. Thank you, Charlie. It's our pleasure to do it. We love every minute of it. And George, <laughs> don't stress out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.